Here's the talent and gear setup. We're doing a 15 Halls of Atonement. Let us begin. Thing as Mistweaver. Just gonna always make sure that we apply our little Mistweaver or our Monk debuff to everything. I'm gonna ring a piece of those guys in so they're nice and stacked up for the big AoE here. Because even if they're standing like right out there, they're out, out of range for a lot of the cleave. So the bolster would be really nasty. And I have the soul letting ruby at a really high eye level. Just like a two minute cooldown that's gonna give me like a big crit increase. 10 or 15 seconds. Um, the best time to use it is definitely during Prideful, I think. Um, but I'm just gonna, since it's only a two minute cooldown, I'm just gonna kinda use it when it's ready uh, and do damage with it a lot of the time. Put Ring of Peace down here so that they stay inside of this flame patch on the floor. This is the Mage's flame patch. And then also so that they don't get all spread out because they have different movement speeds and stuff. I don't know, a little tank, don't die. I'm just gonna taunt that off of him just so it runs back this way, just in case. Oh no, he charged back in. I think he was trying to get aggro again. Oh no. I think maybe he thought the rogue got aggro or something and he didn't want him to die. That's unfortunate. The downside to taunting is if you're not in voice, the, the tank might not know like what's going on at all. Like why he's losing aggro like that. So you just gotta be careful about using it. Possible you just thought he could survive if he charged in, but I don't know. Pretty scary with the dogs having like five bolster stacks. We're also gonna usually try to save our touch of death for pridefuls. Just cause Monk doesn't have like a lot of tools for dealing with prideful besides just spam healing. So early on in the prideful, we're gonna make sure that we use a lot of do, doing a lot of damage. We're gonna use our thunder focus T on rising sun kick to get it a reduced cooldown, so we can pretty much use it like back to back three times in a row. Then we touch a death, and it falls over. Go into the next pack. piece these in again just to help. I didn't really get them in a good spot, but they just need to be interrupted, honestly. We'll use bubble on the tank. We apply our debuff to everything. Dispel the Siphon Life instantly. The Siphon Life gets casted by the Collector here. And if it goes off, you just need to make sure that you are ready to dispel whoever gets the debuff. It's gonna hurt, so we're gonna use a defensive here. And heal up the tank as soon as his stacks go away. Mount up and catch up. big pull here, so we need to make sure we focus the shard here. This pull is usually pretty dangerous because the last pull we had prideful and we probably also had a lot of cooldowns. We had like combust and stuff like that. And then for this pull we like almost have nothing, so it's just a lot more dangerous to try to double pull this when you don't have pride in all your cooldowns. Because the shard just takes so long to die and it's more than likely going to get bolstered a lot of the time. Luckily we're killing it actually really evenly though. I'm gonna use Revival here to pick us up. And then, there's only so much we can do about the tank with Necrotic. <sighs> that was unfortunate. I should have just dispelled the Priest there with the Siphon Life. I was just scared that I was gonna die to the Curse. But the Mage actually ended up dispelling me, so I didn't die. 
I did not expect to get dispelled. I guess he has been dispelling me this whole time, so I should have kind of used that knowledge, I guess, to my advantage. Get another pride here. So. We'll just use our invoke Elon for this prideful. I don't know if it's the case anymore. I'm sure the monk discord has info about it, but you, whenever you press Yulon, you have to use Soothing Mist on a player, and then you also have to cast Enveloping Mist every time. Uh, otherwise, he won't cast his abilities on people. Hopefully they fixed that by now, but knowing monk bugs, they probably didn't. And then we're really just doing damage while Yulon does all the healing for us. Oh, I hate jumping down here. This is so bad for Necrotic. Gives us nowhere to move. I'm gonna save Leg Sweep for... We'll just use it on this Rapid Fire here. I'll taunt this guy in because he's gonna get aggro no matter what. So we just gotta taunt him in now to start cleaving him. We can use Paralysis to interrupt the... The loyal beast, it got interrupted, but I still ended up using paralysis because I was already in the global. Pop our trinket here to get some crit. And we'll heal up the tank to quick vivify. Okay, bro just kept standing in that, so unfortunate. I just touched to death that. I guess technically I should have saved my Touch of Death because we're like sitting here waiting for the rogue anyway, so I could have used Touch of Death like on this pack. Or on the Prideful, I think I had it up for Pride. I think it just died so fast that I didn't realize it. At like that time I made it as well, so I don't know. It was a little inconsistent, so we just need to always assume that it's going to go through. Help focus the shard here. Leg sweep the collector since it's not getting interrupted. Also, this one since it's not getting interrupted, and then we'll dispel. Get a little bit of healing. Spell again. Use Essence Swan. Throw out my Renews. And then we're just doing damage again. We don't need to top off the group here. You can just do damage. Just let people get healed up from renewing this. And then as we're running over here before my Covenant ability expires, I can just throw out Essence Swan just to like finish topping off the group. Go into this pack. Oh my gosh, I almost just rolled into all of those mobs aggroed on me. That was so bad. And I'm gonna leg sweep that. I'm gonna let this rapid fire go through, and then I'm just gonna watch for the the major cast. It doesn't look like it's gonna go through, so we're good. And then for prideful, you get. I think you get extra crit on this trinket if you use it on targets that are low HP. So I'm going to pop it right now while these mobs are super low. Right as the prideful spawning and then I get like 10 seconds of a way bigger amount of crit. And then I can use that to do damage. But if you want to use it to do healing to the prideful then you're going to want to wait till pride's about like 60% health and then pop the trinket. If you're wanting to use it for more of like a healing effect. But if you'd like to use it for damage then that's usually the best way of going about it. You can do that if like you're playing Resto Druid and you plan to DPS or like use Convoke offensively on the Prideful. You can use your Soul Lighting Ruby like right before the mobs that are going to spawn Prideful die. So you get more crit. Cool. Like ran into it and then did a pull timer, that was weird. Just going to top off the tank here just, just in case. Usually this boss you don't need to do any healing on anyone except the tank when he's like below 75% health. So as long as he's above 75 we can literally just DPS and then we just make sure we don't stand in front of the boss ever. Gonna keep doing damage, pick up my little orbs. 
is where we heal up the tank again. We'll just throw a bubble on him just so that he knows that we're not trolling him. We just want to do some damage. It's okay if you like dip your toes in this stuff on the floor too. It doesn't hurt that much. And then here I will use Thunder Focus T to use Rising Sun Kick, and then I just do a uh, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, and now I have the three stacks. I use Blackout Kick, and then I can use another Rising Sun Kick if it resets. I try to usually follow that pattern when I plan to do like that's kind of like your you know your big DPS burst rotation I guess as a Mistweaver. Even though it's not very much DPS, but. How you do the most damage in like the shortest amount of time is Miss Weaver. Ooh. You got Din DJ Sin lighted on. Here we'll res him. We're a good boy with engineering. We'll heal up the tank. Or renewing mist out. Or two renewing mist out just because. Touch of death. Get some stacks. And then we'll do it again here. We go Rising Sun Kick with Thunder Focus T, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, Tiger Palm, Rising Sun Kick, and done. Definitely not bad DPS. 1.8k on the boss is not bad at all. Just gonna leg sweep these. Those don't bolster, so it's okay. Buff to everything. Go ahead and just put a ring of peace down just so that the tank like can stand in it if he wants to try to reset his stacks. He probably won't be able to. But at least it uh, reduces a little bit of his damage. to pull both of these for prideful i think he's waiting down there for the other one to come out you can always tell when these are going to activate by this thing patrolling down here this slasher that patrols i talked about it more in my paladin bot of this uh this dungeon but I will upload to YouTube. Just doing big heal because these things are. I don't think I applied my monkey buff. Then we get pride here. I'm gonna try to just get as much mana as I can. I can just fit in a drink before the first pulse of damage right there. By renewing this, get a reset. I'll do another renewing this, and then we'll do damage here with our Thunder Focus T. So we'll do the whole Rising Sun Kick Tiger Palm thing. There we go. And I'm gonna save like my cooldowns, like revival and stuff, for the boss. I'm just kind of top people off as we start doing this. I didn't need to press Manatee, I don't know why I just said that. Just out of habit. That's kind of pointless. 
Just gonna start by doing as much damage as we can. I think we'll save the Soul Lighting Ruby. I don't know. It's, it's such a weird trinket to use on Miss Weaver, honestly. It's like not... It's really good for healing, but... It doesn't really fit well into damage. Just gonna use Revival here. Okay, tank is gonna have the little dot. Dodge that. I'll use Soul Lighting Ruby here now, just for damage. Just where you're melting this boss. But I might as well help melt it. Put a bubble on the tank just to help them. We'll use our two renewing mists just so they're ready for when all the little ads spawn. Get away from the tank so that we don't get hit by the circle. We'll put another renewing mist out. And then I'm gonna ring a piece like one of them that are out in the corner over here just to help out, like with them getting stacked up since they're not being interrupted. Then we'll pop Thunder Focus C here and just spam a couple of Vivifies. I could probably go with using Thunder Focus C on like Resuming Mist instead, but it's not a big deal. We'll get in here and pop all of these. I could have actually, that was stupid of me, I could have rolled out. I just didn't expect to get dispelled. I keep forgetting that the mage is actually dispelling. The last group I was in did like zero dispels, so I just am used to healing through it now. Yeah, this is the nasty pack. Our job is to make sure that these Hound Masters get interrupted. I'm gonna use Ring of Peace for the first interrupts. And then we'll go from there. So we'll just we're literally just watching for the Loyal Beast cast. And when Loyal Beast happens, we are interrupting. That is our job. There it is, I got both of them. That one started casting me right after. That's why I waited like half a second. And then now we can heal the tank up. I I don't know if I had Leg Sweep up yet. I had like 15 seconds on it when we started the pull, so I don't think I did. But using Leg Sweep to interrupt that is definitely better than using Ring of Peace, because you want to use Ring of Peace to like help the tank kite the Gargans so that they don't get super spread out from each other. But this still turned out like really well. We killed everything really evenly. everything, do some damage to whatever's highest HP. Just use my soul lighting ruby here. I, oh, that was a frontal. I'm bad. I'm standing in the wrong spot. Um, I think, yeah, we just wait for a rest. They, they got it just fine. Life and life is gonna hurt a lot, but hopefully he blocks it. Oh, the ice block, dude. Nope. Lucky. Okay, Priest still reses. He should be fine. Yeah, that was just me standing in front of the pack. Oh no, dude, don't die. Man, he's gonna die. Okay, we just have to run back. Not worth waiting to see if they have NG res or not, so I'm just gonna run back and... Um, are we gonna have to use Shroud? No, I don't think we do. I think Rogue's coming back to Shroud us anyways. But we shouldn't need to Shroud. We can just wait until this path's to the top of its uh, patrol. Like right up here, and then we can go.
Oh, we do have two vent here. Wait, can he take control of two? Wait, how does he do that? I don't know how to do that. You just have to press the button really fast twice. It's actually nuts. I didn't know you could do that. That's actually so much damage. It's insane. So fun fact with Monk, you can taunt these parishioners when they come out and they will run at their fixated target with increased movement speed. Because your taunt increases the target's movement speed. And since they're fixated, they won't swap aggro to you or anything, but they still get like the movement speed increase. So you can help them like get to their spot faster like this one. I'll taunt it once it's in the right spot. So he runs it over here, I taunt it, it runs a little bit faster. And it, it actually does like make quite a bit of quite a bit of a difference. If you, you know, have like a melee stack group or you're on like this last file or anything like that and you need, you know, you, it's just less damage that goes out to your group. But here again, I just taunt it and it runs faster into the, the lamp. Also, if you have like a melee DPS or something that has to go run out of the group to go stand there because they have the boss over here, it just helps your melee just get, you know, get through that mechanic a lot faster. So, just a fun little thing you can do with Monk. And like this right here, Rogue has to run out. I taunt it over, and now he's done. And then this next room that we're going to be in, the only real tip I have for a Mistweaver Monk is you just really want to make sure that you don't burn through all your mana too fast because you're going to be in this room for a long time in most pug groups. And then right after this is done, you have a prideful one. You pretty much don't get a chance to really like re you know, like recover on mana. You're kind of doing this plus a prideful back to back and it can just be rough. We're gonna focus on like using cooldowns, we use revival there, and we're just running around like applying our debuff to everything. Not overly important since we mostly have caster DPS, but then we'll throw like a bubble out on the, the rogue, we'll throw renewing mist out, and then we're using our thunder focus T to buff our vivifies just so that um, we use up less mana if we feel like we're gonna be in here for a long time. Manifestation spawn, we debuff them. We leg sweep them just to reduce a little bit of damage done. We'll use Manatee and then spam some Vivifies here because this is where the group's going to start taking a lot of damage is when like all these fixates are happening from the manifestations. Very easy to like start burning through your mana if you're not paying attention so. Pop our Covenant ability here just to use it and then we'll start doing damage. And this is where now there's like zero damage happening, so this is your chance to, if you need to, this is where you start like recovering mana by not casting, you know, a lot of like mana intensive spells until prideful spawns. And then like with all the pridefuls, we're going to focus on doing damage. I should say like with most of the Pridefuls, not all, there are some where you, but usually with every Prideful, at the very start you have plenty of time to like fit in a decent amount of globals into DPSing it, and that makes it die significantly faster, which reduces like a lot of the required healing you need to do for Prideful. So we're all just spam uh, a couple of vivifies. The mage has alter time, so we don't need to heal him at all. There we go, and our mana is nice and full. And we'll just do as much damage as we can here. We'll just use the Soul Lighting Ruby just to do damage as well. And then we're doing the whole uh, Rising Sun Kick Tiger Palm thing. And then we're going to double soak these with our defensives just to help the group take less damage. So the way I do that is I'm just going to stand really close to the boss here 
and double soak these. I think the mage is actually doing it for us. No, I took it. So I'm just double soaking these two and I just use like life cocoon on myself. That's not going towards us. You can tell which way those are going, by the way, it, from when he targets them with the little beam. They'll like face a certain direction or face a certain player, I should say. And then uh, that's where they're gonna fly. So like this one's gonna fly right here, like that. Does it face the Shadow Priest? Okay, and then we'll double soak again here with uh, like Diffuse Magic and Fort Brew. We'll just use both since we don't have a reason to, to not do that. So I double soak here, I press Fort Brew. So see, I'm soaking these two up here and then we have these two being soaked by like individuals, which is the, the priest and the rogue, I think. And now it's the tank. I was talking, so I didn't use Diffuse Magic also like I had planned, but that's okay. I'm just gonna roll out of the way. I did not see where that was going, so that was a little scary. This is where the warrior will actually start getting completely wrecked by the debuff that the boss puts on him. The Stigma of Pride is like ticking damage and it increases the, the longer the dot is on him, and I think it lasts like 15 seconds. So it does the most damage towards the end of the, the dot. So prop warriors especially get absolutely wrecked by that dot. Awesome, that was an easy little 15. 